Today we'll be looking at how to make this looping animation in Blender. To start, we'll make the spheres. I like using icospheres as they have more uniform geometry. I set the subdivisions to 4 to get it nice and smooth, and of course set it to shade smooth. To get the layering, I duplicated the icosphere and scaled it up a bit. As you can see in wireframe, you want to leave a slight gap for parallax, but it shouldn't be too big or else it looks very empty. Do this two more times so you have four layers, and now we can start with the shading. Let's quickly set up the render settings so we know exactly how it's going to look in the end. Personally, I did this animation Eevee as it just renders so much faster than cycles. I also went into the world settings and clicked on this yellow button and added an environment texture. Now you can open an HDRI. I personally like HDRIs from HDRI Haven as they're high quality and free to use. Now. You can drag out a new window and set it to the shader editor. If you change this object to world, you can see the shader setup for the world. Duplicate the background and mix them with a mix shader node. Now you can add a light path node and use the is camera ray as the factor for the mix shader so that all the objects are affected by the HDR, but the camera sees whatever is in this node down here. Now let's add the materials for the different layers. Go back to object shading and select the top layer. Add a new material and increase the transmission. Then decrease the roughness to zero. Now you can tweak the IOR to choose how much it should lens the light. To make the glass behave correctly, go to the material properties, scroll down and set it to alpha blend. Make sure to enable screen space refractions in the material settings as well as in the render settings. Now, you should see the sphere underneath. Right now, you'll get these weird artifacts at the edge, so make sure to disable show back face. Now we can work on the second layer. To get this lightning pattern, let's add a Voronoi node and connect it to a color ramp. What you'll see is that right now, it's just dots. Change it from F1 to distance to edge, and you'll get this crystal pattern. Now you can set the color ramp to constant and just take down this value until you have very thin lines. Now you can use a mix shader and connect one of the inputs as an emission and the other one as a transparent BSDF. Use the color output as the factor and what you'll have is just very thin emissive lines and everything else should be transparent. What you'll notice is that this new layer doesn't let any light through. So change the blend mode to alpha clip and just play with the value. You shouldn't really have to change this as it is a harsh fall off anyways. So I'll just leave it at the default. You can already see these artifacts, which we actually want in the render as it gives it this holographic style. I have no idea what causes them, but personally I like them, so I didn't even try to fix them. Now let's work on a third layer. Add another material and insert a wave texture. With another color ramp, you can also set it to constant and again, decrease this value to something fairly low. Now, increase the detail as well as the detail scale and then just take up the distortion a lot. What you can do then is switch these two values as we will use this output as the alpha. What that means is everything that's white is gonna be metallic with a low roughness and everything that's black is gonna be see-through. Again, go down and change it to alpha clip. Now you should be able to see through. Our last material is slightly harder. Again, add a new material as well as a noise texture. Duplicate it and add a mix RGB node. Connect the factor to the color and the color to the vector. Now add a texture coordinate and connect the object coordinates to the vector of the noise texture and to one of the color outputs of the mix node. Set the value to one and now you can see and you can see that the noise texture has some interesting distortion. Now tweak the values. Now let's add another color ramp and connect the color to the base color. Move the two markers closer to each other and then change the color of them.
Another thing you need to do is increase the distortion of the first noise texture. This is going to give it more detail. Now we can do the final tweaks. I'll go into the lightning part again and set the emission color to something blue. I'm also going to go into the screen space reflection settings. I'm also going to go into the screen space reflection settings and decrease edge fading. Now I'm going to join all the objects. Once they're joined, we can easily array them. So what I'll do is set the count to 5 and set the distance to something like 1.2. Then we can just duplicate this array twice and change each of them for the different axes. Now we have this grid of balls. One thing that you'll notice when you array them is that every single sphere looks exactly the same. What you can do to fix this is add a texture coordinate node to each material and connect the object output to all the vector inputs. You might have to change the scale of some of the materials. Now we can add the camera. I'm gonna animate it. I'm gonna animate it with a circular curve and position it exactly in front of the middle sphere. Now move it back a bit and rotate it along the x-axis. Now add a camera. Make sure the rotation and location is cleared by pressing Alt R and Alt G accordingly. Then go to the object constraints and add a follow path. Select the curve you just created and everything should just work. Now, click animate path so everything moves correctly. If you select the path, you'll see that under path animation, the length is set to 100 frames. We can add an empty so that the camera always tracks to the sphere. To do that, I'm gonna use plane axes. Move them so that they line up with the sphere. Go into the camera and select another object constraint. This one is going to be track 2. Select the empty you just created and the camera should always point towards this sphere. What you can also do is in rendered view, go to the camera and add depth of field. Select the same empty you just created so that it's always focused on the front of this sphere. Personally, I'm going to add a bit of chromatic aberration. To do this, render one image. It doesn't matter which one. Go into the compositing tab and drag out a new window. Set it to image editor and select the render result. Now check use nodes. Here you'll see the rendered image. To add chromatic aberration, add the lens distort node. Put it between the two nodes. Click fit and increase this version a bit. This is probably already too much as you really don't want to exaggerate with this effect. I think for this render, 0.05 should work nicely. Now you can render out the animation. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As always, you'll be able to get the blend file for free on Gumroad. See ya.